He would spend most of the wealth he got. In fact, whenever a patient would come, he would rarely ask for any sum of money. How strange that would be in this day and age of modern medicine to think you can go to your doctor and he won't even ask you for a bill. He won't ask you for a single penny. You just have the cure of the doctor and can walk away. This was the blessing of Molana, but Allah reimbursed him wonderfully by always giving him many gifts. And with those gifts, what he would do, he would serve humanity, help the poor, help the widows, help the students, and help them along his way. At one point, someone asked him about this quality in his life of, of forgetting about himself and his loved ones. And they said, I quote, some of my friends tell me that you do not save anything. You have a wife and little children. How will they be maintained after your death? I tell them, Allah is living, al Hay. He is not dead. He is omniscient. He knows all things. If I serve him, will he not look after my family? What a living faith. What a trust. What a spirit, what a heart. And these were the words of those who can only utter them who have a true love and faith in God Almighty. Many of his qualities, again in his life, they stand out. His love for the Quran, his devotion in prayers. And it can be summarized in the eyes of one of his contemporaries, Sir Syed Ahmed Khan, who at that time was a social reformer and very famous as educator in India. Someone approached him and said that when an illiterate person gains knowledge, he becomes educated. And when an educated person, he increases in knowledge, he becomes a Hakim. And when Hakim advances further, he becomes a Sufi. So please tell me, sir, what is the case of one who reaches the height of one who's a Sufi? Sir Syed answered and wrote back, He is transformed then into Nuruddin, the light of faith. Of course, all of this life, and again, these are just some very brief snapshots, they are leading up to a grander purpose, a grander awakening of his spirit, and that awakening was to be the response to a prayer of the person of that time commissioned by God, Hazrat Ahmed. Hazrat Ahmed, in his keen desire to have a companion, he once said, quote, For days and nights together, I very humbly supplicated and prayed to my beloved God, O oh Lord, I am alone. Who will be my helper and associate? Grant me one. When I raised my hands in the morning, supplication, the whole heaven was full of my wailing and my prayers. Then God, in His infinite mercy, granted my prayers and conferred upon me His choicest blessings. And He, from His majesty, gave me a pious, sincere, and obedient friend. And His name, like His Nurani qualities, His brilliant qualities, was Nuruddin. Later, again, Hazrat Ahmed would say that when He came to me and met me and I beheld Him, I realized that He was one of the signs of my Lord. And I was convinced that he was the answer to my prayer, which I had so persistently offered, and I discovered that he was one of the elect of God. He obeys me in everything as the pulse moves in accord with one's breathing, and I observe that wisdom flows from his lips and heavenly light descends upon him. These are the words I share with you of Hazrat Ahmed, because otherwise, if one of us were to mention them, you may think it's an exaggeration. But coming from the mouth of the prophet of the age, we can know it was no exaggeration. It was an extreme blessing to have such a personality in his life at that time. And soon that blessing was to be the source of a blessing for all of us, the beginning of Khalafit. The Sufis say, again, that when one, the prophet or the messenger, the first one to be inspired by God to accept the truth, that is the one upon the death of the messenger. When a severe earthquake and a time of great danger takes place, God Almighty provides reassurance through that Khalifa. And that Khalifa revives and strengthens afresh the purpose of the advent of the deceased. In the case of Hazrat Mulana Nuruddin, we know that he was the first to sign the Bayat to join the Ahmadiyya movement. And he joined 
him in spirit before that in 1885. So from 1885, the time he first met Hazrat Ahmed, until his death in 1908, a span of 23 long years, you can see this is the same span that existed in the life of Hazrat Abu Bakr, Allah be pleased with him, who was a Sadiq, the true friend of our beloved master, the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, And both of them were by their master's side through thick and thin, giving all they had, their energy, their wealth, their time, their property, whatever they could to serve the faith, to protect their master. Hazrat Abu Bakr was known as the companion in the cave. Hazrat Mawlana Nuruddin, he was truly the companion of all those years in Qadian, when all the abuses, all the attacks and insults were being heaped upon the Prophet Islam. But Hazrat Mawlana Nuruddin, he was there to stand up and, and to support him in this mission. Allah says about this in the Holy Quran, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرُسُلِهِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصِّدِّقُونَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ لَهُمْ أَجْرُهُمْ وَنُورُهُمْ وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَكَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِنَا أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَابُ الْجَحِيمِ Allah says, and those who believe in Allah and His messengers, and they are the truthful, the Siddiq, and the witnesses, the Shaheed, in the sight of their Lord, they will have their reward in their light. But as for those who disbelieve and reject our signs, they are the inmates of the hell. This is one of the great spiritual ranks that we often overlook when we think about the four ranks one can achieve in life. The rank of Sali, righteous, the rank of Shaheed, a martyr, the rank of Sadiq, who was the truthful one, and of course the highest rank of Nabi. And you look in this whole progression, the person just behind the rank of the Nabi is Sadiq because he is so much in aligned with him and has such a spiritual affinity with him, he becomes like his true reflection and shadow and often or not as in the case of Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him, and Hazrat Mulana nur din they are the ones that truly become their first inheritors of blessings, their first Khalifas and bring about a continued reformation of the people to whom they are sent. I say all this now because in conclusion we must think about greatness being thrust upon Hazrat Mawlana nur din As he said many times in his writing, he never wished to be a Khalifa. At the time of the election of the Khalifat, he looked around, he saw in the room those who were blood relations to Hazrat Ahmad salam, his son. He saw his wife and said even in some cases if this was a worldly empire, she would inherit like the queens do or the son would inherit, or the father-in-law, or, or, or son-in-law. And he said, they would be equal candidates and better than me, but in one voice, all of them rejected it. Why? Because of the spirit, the righteousness, the service, the love of Allah, the love of the Messenger, the love of the Quran, the love of the Holy Prophet and the Prophet Messiah, knowing that Hazrat Mawlana Nur din was the most righteous amongst them, even those who later on would be some of the greatest detractors of the Jamaat and would break off and separate, even at that time, they would admit there was none better than Maulana Nur din to take upon this charge.